Welcome back, thanks for tuning in. My recent video regarding the basics of acrylic welding has brought up a number of concerns. A lot of people left comments regarding uh, safety and alternatives to using methylene chloride and a bunch of other stuff. A sufficient number of things that I thought was a good idea to put together this slightly more advanced version of acrylic welding to go through uh, my processes for what I do to ensure, well, I get a good weld and you know, success in that sort of end. And uh, later on, I'm also going to cover uh, what I do to ensure my safety as well. Now, the first thing I always do when I uh, have an acrylic job, of course, is I have to cut the acrylic. And I've shown many, many clips of this over the years. And a lot of people say, no, no, what you need to do is have the blade just clearing the acrylic because, you know, safety for your fingers and whatnot. Now, I've never shown this. I should have done this a long time ago. This is why I keep the blade higher. Because when you have a low angle of attack like that, even with a sharp blade like this, you end up deflecting the acrylic up and you end up with an unsquare and erratic uh, seam. And that's not good. You can't do a proper acrylic welding that way. That's why I keep the blade up really high. And the other thing is you need to practice this. I'm going to feed this through too quickly. And you're going to see it chatter. And that is uh, one of the problems of, uh, uh, when people go to the process of learning how to do this is they end up uh, getting frustrated. And what I suggest is just get a bunch of acrylic. This is going to be the proper speed. And you can see it doesn't do any chattering at all. You need to not feed in too quickly and end up with chattering and not feed in too slowly where you end up melting the joint. So, you know, it's a combination thereof and it takes a feel and practice for. You have to, you have to try it out. You have to get it like a scrap piece of acrylic. Try it out a bunch of times and, uh, like I said, get a feel for it. And the other thing that's very important with acrylic welding and probably an awful lot of other projects that you might want to get into involving wood or anything else, what I do is I measure and set up the stop for, uh, this in this case, seven inches. So every piece that I'm cutting at seven inches uh, goes through all at once. So they're all one measurement. So they're not off by a little bit or whatever. And they're all exactly the same size. And that's really important because, well, with methylene chloride, what I use, uh, there is no wiggle room. Uh, you need a nice tight joint because, uh, like I said, it has very high vapor pressure. There's no viscosity at all. And if uh, it is not a good joint, it will, uh, well, you won't get a good weld. So these are all the pieces I cut. I'm going to uh, weld a couple of them together here just to show you. And I'm going to go through uh, another couple of things that are, first off, it's going to involve uh, the proper procedure for uh, the welding process, but also going to uh, get into safety. So first off, uh, you need to peel your acrylic because uh, that causes wicking and you could end up with a bunch of issues uh, with it going up the sides and ruining the look of your uh, job and also can also melt the, uh, the protective covering. The other thing is, uh, this is just a piece of paper towel and you can see in the background I have a fan running. Uh, I didn't, don't normally show it, but there is always a strong cross breeze, and that will definitely help in the sense that uh, no accumulation. I actually, doing it my, this way here, I never actually ever smell the methylene chloride. So other important procedures here. First off, get yourself a good ground glass stoppered acid bottle. Uh, it is essential. Uh, nothing ever gets out of that thing. A good quality one. And the only time that's ever opened is when I um, pour a little bit in here and then uh, load up the syringe. And then the lid goes right back on and, uh, like I said, there's never a time when I actually smell methylene chloride. And it's a very easy smell to recognize. And like I said, just put this in here, quickly load that, and then pour the excess back in. And you'll notice the amount that I use is very, very low. And which is the other important detail here for when you're going through this process. And you need steady hands for starters, but don't use the squirt bottles they give you with a little metal pipe on the end of it. They are not anywhere near as accurate as a syringe. Someone suggested getting a, a glass a syringe, like a ground glass one. Uh, if you have a good quality one, that's perfectly fine, but I find the rubber stopper ones give me a lot more control and I prefer that. Because what happens is I use very, very little methylene chloride. It's just a tiny amount, just enough to uh, cause the welding process. And there's no excess whatsoever. Again, uh, limiting my exposure to it. And that's it. Very tiny bead. And with all of the air circulation in here, the 
the amount of methane chloride that actually gets into the air is minimal. And while I'm actually going to finish this up, there's one other thing I want to mention, because methylene chloride is used in a great number of processes. The one that's probably the most dangerous for people is uh, paint thinners. And also, of course, for stripping paint, because then you're exposed to a great deal of it. This is like tiny compared to that. And the other thing to possibly alleviate some people's fears, or maybe create more, uh, it is used in the food industry. Uh, mostly... Uh, depending upon where you are and uh, where you buy your coffee from, uh, decaffeinated coffee is decaffeinated uh, with methylene chloride. It's a great extractor. It's a good solvent, that sort of thing. But it's also used in extracting um, the flavor of spices and other things, and if they're going to add a flavor enhancer into food, and that's another great use for it. Well, it is a use for it, let's put it that way. So hopefully with all these things that you'll understand that um, methane chloride is probably your best bet uh, for the weld. Now, I have uh, had a couple of questions about people using other things like acetone and chloroform, which I don't even think I could buy here. Uh, and the problem with all those things is they're nowhere near as good as methane chloride. It is the best uh, for giving you the strongest weld. Acetone, uh, you need a lot more of it. It is also not a very safe chemical as well, even though it's used in nail polish. And I did check uh, with a biochemist, and I did check with my uh, people who do this professionally for a living and what they do. Uh, the only thing that they ever cut their methylene chloride with is glacial acetic acid, and that is when they're doing really large welds and they need to slow down the evaporation process, and uh, that's it. That's the only thing they do. And that's pretty much everything, I think. I think I've covered it all now. I suspect that this uh, video will generate even more uh, questions. If that comes up, please leave comments. I always uh, answer my comments, and hopefully I'll be able to, uh, well, address any other concerns that you might have. Uh, someone suggested also that they have a professional um, person who does this, and they use some squished needles for this and yes though i know they do that but it's usually only with uh, much larger wells one eighth they never do that with because it's there's just literally no use for it but with the larger uh, thicknesses you do need to give it more time to actually seat in there and, and do its job and also to prevent bubbles so there you go this filter is almost finished there's a few more things i need to do to these guys and then they're going to be put into use uh, that'll all be on my other channel thanks for watching um, leave comments, let me know what you think about all this, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.